we keep throwing around mindset, so I just want to break that down a little bit. Um, there is a poll question, I believe. And I'm going to be honest, recently we did a self-assessment test of our um, world championships starting, well, we did a self-assessment of all the different skills involved, which was a pretty long Google form, but it was really helpful. Um, and one of the things was like, how good are you at line sites? And it was interesting because Steph and I answered it slightly differently. And the question was, you know, how good are you guys at getting line sites? And we can get line sites nine out of 10 times, you know, like we're, we're fairly good at using that. Um, but it was, if I think back to the number of races that I actually like use my line site, it, the number is much lower, you know, it's probably like 50 or 60% uh, on a good day. So um, that was just an area of improvement that we pointed out. And uh, I, I look forward to like getting back to training and working on that. But um, I would say that the accuracy that it allows you to have to have a good line site, even if you get line sites 10 times and you use it like once when the, when the fleet doesn't know where the line is, like that's a huge gaining opportunity, you know? So, um, well, after this um, topic, we're gonna break for some questions. So I'd love to hear more from you guys about like, if it's a matter of difficulty getting transits or, um, yeah, let me just lay out for you like how we do it. And then and I'd love to hear more about what, what your difficulties are. Um, okay, so we will always get a line site on the line and our online line site is always through the flag on the committee boat and that's important because if your committee boat's 20 feet long and the orange flag is on the bow versus the stern like that's gonna have a big impact on your line site so you've got to make sure that where you're getting your starting line line site from on the boat is really where they're sighting the line okay so we've got that orange flag and then you go through the pin to something on shore and um we've got some really fancy word art here for you sorry <laughs> these graphics are so awesome uh there's a water tower on shore that is our online transit in this uh in this diagram okay and then the other two areas we like to get line sites are it's either like two blanks under or like four blanks under and that changes based on the conditions um in our boat in a 49er when it's really windy we like to set up four to three or four boat lengths under the line and get a lot of flow and accelerate and hit the line at full speed after traveling a few boat lengths. Um, and that is different than a light air start where everyone will like sit on the line completely stopped, you know, within one to two boat lengths of the line and um, not move forwards or backwards or anything. Just hold that spot for like three or four minutes sometimes and then put the bow down and accelerate. Um, and so in one case scenario, you're really close to the line the whole time. And so that will be, you know, in the light air, it's important for me to have like a one or two under line sight uh, to shore. And when it's windy, it's more important to have that like four bolt length under benchmark um, further under the line. And then, you know, if you do happen to have three transits on shore, it's really helpful to watch how, how quickly you're closing in on the line based on how soon those transits are coming up. Steph, is this, uh, is that all kind of making sense? Are there any questions sure. in the chat specifically about that yeah. stuff? Yeah, we do. So I, I just wanted to add one thing is, one thing you can add to your pre-start routine, and just like Maggie said, it is seeing how quickly you close in on those line sites. We'll often take runs at the line. We'll, we'll go down, you know, a couple boat lengths away from the line, tack onto starboard, and then, um, and then sail close haul to the line and, and look at our line sites and see how quickly we're closing in on them just so we can get a, a better gauge for time and distance. Um, and then Luke Johnson just asked, um, what are our tips for judging distance when you're on an offshore course and there are no land references for line sites? I'm laughing because it's, uh, yeah, it's impossible. You obviously can't get any line sites and those are definitely the hardest days. Um, you know, you might, you might consider um, just starting at an end on that day because you don't know where the line is. And if, if you're on an offshore course, you might not have any huge shifts going on. So you don't really need to, you know, be at one end of the line or the other. So you can just take an end and, and focus on speed off the end of the line. Um, the other thing is we, we do work really hard. So, um, okay, sorry, Luke, one, one other option is to cite everything but in the opposite direction. So citing from the pin over the committee boat. Um, and that's, that takes a little practice to get used to looking the opposite way uh, and, and getting, you know, using that as a reference, but it is an option to have a committee boat uh, line site going in the opposite direction. Um, if there is nothing on shore or nothing good, or maybe, you know, you can't see anything, um, we will, 
ask Julia, our coach, um, if this is an option for you to go to leeward of the line and sight from the pin to the boat. And basically we'll do runs up the you know, we'll do runs up the starting line and um, either I'll raise my hand when I think we're on the line and I hope she raises her hand at the same time, you know, <laughs> um, and then she'll raise her hand when we do cross the line. And that just helps me calibrate like, okay, I don't have any references on shore but um, you become familiar with like the distance of the line and where you are and kind of what it feels like and, and what the committee boat looks like at that point. Yeah. One other thing you can do too is um, if you, for example, like start at the boat end and reach down and to the middle of the line, then you can go head to wind and back down from there. So you can kind of reference, okay, I'm backing down two boat lengths from there and then plot your position from there. Um, that's another way to do it. So. It's definitely, it's, it's so hard when you don't have line, when you don't have land on either side, that's, it really throws a wrench into, <laughs> into plans. Yeah. Um, um, and we've learned also though, that like, it's important to know who you're starting against and how frequent OCSs are in your fleet. Um, because there are days that we've all had these days when you get off the water and you're like, oh my gosh, that boat was definitely over. That whole pack must have been over. And then they weren't, you know, and um, that should kind of make you question your judgment you know, and, and wonder if they have a better sense of where the line is, or maybe they did on that day, but just know that, like, know the behavior of your fleet, um, and how frequent OCSs are, because if they're very infrequent, and you're the only one that thinks everyone else is over, then you might reconsider. <laughs> What's that? Reconsider how you approach it. Yes, that's a good way to put it, exactly.